Hello and welcome to a new video about typical issues in automation. Last time we talked about sequence of signals. We said, okay, it's maybe an issue to have the sequence of signals right, that we have a sequence in order. It's not only about alarming and, and operational messages, it's also about the measurements. When I do not know when a measurement was happening, I simply do not know where to put it, yeah? if I want to draw a trend yeah? and I get measurements from several systems, yeah? this needs to be in sync because then I see, okay, here something was open and here the temperature was dropping or whatever, yeah? to have this in sync, yeah? this is important. However, let's say we have solved this because we covered this in the last video, we are aware of this, we used some technique to resolve this and this is all perfectly in sync at the same time. We know exactly when those measurements are happening, everything is fine. Now we're going to talk about another issue called the aliasing. What is this? We'll see. Because actually our automation systems does take snapshots of a measurement. You know, it's not recorded continuously. It's recording a value and a time afterwards again a value, again a value, and it's writing those values usually in some sort of database. So I only have snapshots of the signal. I knew exactly at this time it was that high, at this time it was that, at this time it was that. Yeah, I took snapshots. Okay. Now we're going to look what it means if we do that. Yeah? That we try to reconstruct the form of a measurement or the time thingy of a measurement yeah? uh, when we are taking snapshots. Yeah? I prepared here a little something. Yeah? It's just, you know, it's just uh, an Excel sheet. Yeah? And I'm just using a sine wave. Yeah? And currently I'm say okay, the sine wave is 0 0.1 hertz, so this means every 10 seconds, this is why we see here at 10 seconds a full a full wave was finished. Okay? And I said twice a second I'm recording this. Yeah? Because you know every 500 milliseconds new data point is written into the database and these are those circles yeah? at 0 seconds, at 0 0.5 seconds, at 1 second, at 1.5 seconds, tuk, 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 I record this. What we currently see here is an orange line. This orange line is the reconstructed measurement and underneath there is a blue line yeah? and since we don't see the blue line it seems to fit perfect. Okay? So I have enough snapshots that this looks okay working. Huh? Now let's see if I change the frequency of the signal to a higher signal so that I still have two measurements per second, two snapshots per second. Well, let's see what happens if I'm using 0.2. Huh? See? Uh -huh. well, still looks pretty much the same. However, here we already see a little blue part here. This means it's not fitting too perfect. Yeah? But however you see, you could say, no, still working. Yeah? Let's look if I look at 0 0.3. They, oh, oh. Here we already we're missing a little bit more. Yeah? We see there is the blue line. This is the actual measurement, the real value. And the uh, orange line is the reconstructed out of our snapshots. You see, okay, here fits perfect. These things here, uh, we don't hit anymore. Yeah? Okay. Is it that important? It's just an archive and so on. Yeah, let's see if we make this worse. 0 0.4. Ah, still would say the same situation. We're not reaching the full extent, but almost and so on. Yeah. So 0 0.5. This again looks really good again. Yeah. So we see, okay, full extent and so on. However, now I show you what ha happens. Right now we are at zero. We at zero we measure at at zero at five we measure at one we measure. What changes if I'm not measuring at exactly zero but a little bit later? So I will shift this to minus forty five degree and we see. Oh, 
just because I measure different, I measure exactly as often as before, I have the same signal as before, however, I interpret a totally different signal, because now I'm really missing the tips, you see. Now I'm really missing the amplitude here, because simply I do measure at the wrong positions. So we see this is an issue. But let's see what is happening if we do this further. 0 0.6, how does this look? Strange. 0 0.7. Oh, now it even looks like we have two sine waves overlapping. Yeah? So one with high frequency, one with low frequency. Yeah? And, and in reality, it's still a standard sine wave. Yeah? And we interpret it wrong, simply. Yeah? Zero to eight. Uh -huh. One high, one low, one high, one low. Zero to nine. Yeah? Ooh, we have a Schwebung. Uh, it's called in German. Yeah? So it looks like woo, 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 louder and light, uh, louder and silent, or whatever, the vibra if this is vibration or whatever. At least the frequency is still okay. Yeah? One, yeah? book, extreme, yeah? nothing, nothing left. There is something going on, and a real, if I look at my recording, there was nothing going on. That's a very bad case. Huh? Let's see what is happening here if we do phase shift. Aha, suddenly something going on. Just because of phase shift, I recorded exactly at the same frequency, the, the signal is the same, and just because I'm looking at it at a different time, but also cyclic, I have suddenly a signal. Huh? At a minus 90 degree, I have the full signal. Isn't that interesting? Yeah? I, so with this frequency and this snapshot frequency, I could see the, either the full signal or nothing, depending on the point in time I start my measurement. A lising, a lising, a lising. This is not that great. Yeah? 1.2, we have seen such a thing. Yeah? 1.3, yeah? now it seems like it is repeating itself, yeah? but however, maybe some of you already noticed, ooh, I have to enter the correct, the frequency has changed. Yeah? Let's have a look at this. Here we see it perfect. Yeah? The blue line is the actual, what is actually happening, and the orange line is what I'm interpreting. Yeah? You see, the frequency is only third. We think it's kung 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 kung. In reality, it's kung 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 kung. We don't even see the frequency anymore. Yeah. If we are too too slow for this, yeah. Two is also interesting in sync. Yeah. If we are exactly in synchronization, we see either nothing or. If we are moving again the position, we see it like it would be stable, but in reality it's, it's changing quite rapidly. Yeah? But in our database, it looks like it was a stable measurement. This is a liasing effect, and this is an issue. This we will have. Uh, 2.5, you see, it's now repeating itself, this pattern. Just, it's getting worse. It's getting worse and worse. Uh, 3, 3.1, three let's have a look at this. Oh, again, a nice Schwebung yeah, with different frequency and nothing fits anymore. This is a lysing. This is the lysing effect. And this is purely coming out of the fact that I'm only looking at those things at a certain rate. So that's saying, okay, I make it simply fast enough. Make it fast enough. Look as often as possible, however, I would generate quite a lot of data and probably unnecessary data uh, because if we think about, I don't know, a peering temperature, uh, just because I want to get everything on the peering temperature, I store the peering temperature every, I don't know, 10 milliseconds. Uh, there's changing nothing usually. Yeah? The peering is as hot as it gets. Uh, however, in failure case, if there is some 
chip falling in or if the cooling liquid cooling cycle is 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 broken or whatever then the the, the temperature of the bearing would increase rapidly yeah then i would be glad yeah, to have this well most of the time it does not really matter yeah? and i'm just generating load on the network memory space in the database which is just not necessary yeah? so what to do yeah? one possibility is that we do it like this yeah? we say let's keep at the example of the bearing temperature we say okay bearing temperature usually is changing not too much so every 30 seconds should be okay for us yeah we record every 30 seconds the bearing temperature however like I said if there is a failure case i would be interesting to know in between also and this we could do and then say okay make it cycle every 30 milliseconds uh, every 30 seconds sorry milliseconds <laughs> every 30 seconds and uh, however if the temperature is changing more than two degrees also inform me okay? in between so make if there is change going on make information in between hey this would work huh? because then i'm breaking this analyzing effect which is only appearing if i'm in sync or cyclic yeah if i have some values in between if necessary only if necessary i could give a certain threshold that is um, okay one kelvin two kelvin is okay and everything above book inform me yeah? then we break this cycle and then we're getting all the changes yeah? all the significant changes there are protocols out there which can do this 6870 for instance IEC 6870 this is exactly doing that yeah. uh, so you see you should be aware of this this is the goal yeah? and since automation is such a broad field and such and such specific field for the application yeah, I think that's pretty much what you're going to hear from me you know now how an automation system looks like you know now the features of an automation system you can with the historical development uh, think about why this is looking that way and and why it was developed that way yeah? you know some typical issues yeah? so you should be able to to plot or use your this knowledge to adapt to your specific situation you're facing there yeah? so this is why i think we're done with automation yeah? combined with all the other stuff we talked about control technique and so on yeah however for automation for this automation overview that's it from my side all is left for me to say is Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.